Well, today we are continuing our series called Zoe. And all series long, we've been looking and talking about how uh, God has a specific plan and a purpose for our lives, but he also has a great life in store for us. And if you missed any of the weeks, I encourage you to jump online and begin to watch them because today's message only builds off of the previous messages. And I feel as though everything will begin to come together a little bit better for you when you follow along this series from the very beginning. Because here's what you have to understand. You have to understand that God has good things planned for your life. I know you may think that God is mad at you or he's just waiting for you to mess up so he can scold you or discipline you, but you need to understand that your God is for you and God desires that his children would walk in the plans that he has for them. You have been placed on this earth for a purpose. God has formed you for a purpose. There is a life that God has designed for each of us to live in. And I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful that I serve a God who was for me. Man, I, I'm, I, he has good things in store for me. I am blessed and not cursed. I am favored by the Almighty, and the same is true for you. There is a Zoe life that God desires that each of us would live in. The word Zoe is a Greek word that means the life of God, the eternal life of God. It is a dynamic life. It is a fruitful life. It is a joyful life. It is a life that is filled with fulfillment. And the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I, this is Jesus talking, I have come that they may have a life. Come on, say life. Come on, type life in the comment section. The original word here in this text for life is the word Zoe. So life here just doesn't mean that, that, that you're just going to be alive and breathing. No, this abundant life, this God kind of life that he is talking about, it is a life that is filled with joy. It is life that is filled with fulfillment. It's a life full of purpose. And Jesus says that I have come to give you that life and life more abundantly, this Zoe life. And the God that we worship here today, you need to get this in your spirit here because it, will, it, it can change your worldview and it can change the way that you live your life. The God that we worship here today desires that each of us would walk under his favor, would walk out the plans that he has for our lives. We would walk in fullness and in joy. Why? For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. For there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And he says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope. Plans to give you a future. Listen to me. Your best life is out in front of you. I came here today to uproot bad God out of your mind and plant in you that your God is a good God. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. He wants you to be free. He wants you to walk in healing. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have a future. And he wants you to live a life of freedom and fulfillment. He wants you to experience the Zoe kind of life so you can experience his love, so you can experience his mercy, so you can experience his grace. Your God, the God that we worship here today, your God is a good, good God. I hope you get that into your spirit. God desires that you experience the Zoe Life. What does that mean? Well, Pastor Sam taught us that Zoe life begins the moment that you and I step into relationship with God through his son, Jesus. So we accept Jesus into our lives. And when that happens, this, this Zoe life comes to dwell on the inside of us where we can experience the life that God has for us and the life of God inside of us. Your past is behind you. Your present is secure in Christ and your future is filled with purpose because of this Zoe life. We also learn that God desires to empower us, to empower us with his Holy Spirit to live a dynamic life for him. 
And if you read the scriptures, you find that Jesus walked with his disciples every single day while he was on this earth in his ministry time. They witnessed his powerful miracles. They sat underneath his amazing teachings and each teachings in each of them. They had this personal relationship with the Son of God. Now, if you notice in the scriptures, Jesus did not send them out until he empowered them with the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus resurrected from the grave, he gave them marching orders to go and to be witnesses, but he also told them to wait, to wait. He told them to wait in Jerusalem until they receive what? The Holy Spirit. And then in in Acts chapter 2, we read that the Holy Spirit came into all of the believers and they were baptized and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were empowered to carry out the marching orders that Jesus had given them. So last week we learned that, yes, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives when we step into relationship with God through his son Jesus. And, uh, but then there's another filling, there's another baptism, and that baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you remember uh, when we read in the, the book of Acts chapter 19, when Paul encounters the believers in, the, in, in Ephesus, the town of Ephesus, he walks up and he says, man, have you believed the, or have you received the Holy Spirit? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit uh, since you believed? Come on, say since. Since you believed, and they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? So, so Paul, he, he prays for them. He, he places his hands on them. He begins to pray for them, and they're, they're baptized, and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. So this Zoe life begins when we step into relationship with Jesus, and God empowers us to live this Zoe life when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we, and we receive the baptism, the filling of the Holy Spirit when we re- remove the barriers. We remove the sin when we confess our sin to him and and we step into relationship with Jesus and we remove the doubt, we remove all of those things that would would hold us back and, and we receive it by asking the Lord for it and then believing by faith that we received it. So now that we understand that part of the Zoe life, how we receive it and understanding all of that, which is very foundational, what do we do with all of that? Like, what do we do with all of that? Because let's be honest, Jesus has come to give us this Zoe life. We just read that Jesus himself said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. While many of us were not experiencing the life that God has fully called us to live. We're not experiencing it to its, its fullness. Some of us, we still feel uh, this feeling of lack in our souls. Some of us, we're still having a hard time sleeping at night because we're so unhappy with the way things are going. Some of us are still stuck in the ways of the flesh and we're not operating in the gifts that God has, has placed in our lives. And while others of us, maybe, maybe we, we shrink back and, and we never share our faith when, when the Lord has opened the door. And I really feel it's because we, not, we do not fully understand the purpose of the power that God has sent us and God has given us. So the title of my message today, if you're taking notes, is Power on Purpose. Power on Purpose. I believe with all my heart that God has made each of us on purpose and for a purpose. That there is a why behind your, your who. There's a deep-rooted call on each of our lives. There's a purpose on your life. And God has sent the Holy Spirit into our lives to awaken that purpose, to empower that purpose. And my goal for us as we leave this place here today is to walk out of here understanding the purpose behind the power that has been placed on our lives. To walk out of here under the fire of God, empowered to heal the sick, empowered to live righteously, empowered to defeat the enemy and take back everything the enemy has stolen from our lives, empowered to bring glory and honor to our God with our lives. That is my prayer for you. That is my prayer for my life, that we would walk out of this place understanding what has been placed on our lives, that God has purposed us, God has fashioned us, God has given us his spirit so we can walk in the fullness of God. This Zoe life, come on, power on purpose. And I, and I love the fire of God. I love that phrase. 
I love studying it. I love the wording and looking through scripture and the fire of God. I'm not talking about natural fire here. That is containable. I'm talking about the fire of the Holy Spirit of God. And understanding the fire of God in Scripture, when you, when you look at it from the, the Old Testament to the New Testament, the fire of God represents the presence of God. In the Old Testament, all the way back to Moses, when Moses listened to the command of the Lord and constructed the wilderness tabernacle, the Bible says that fire came down from heaven and went into the Holy of Holies where the priests would be. And then it went out underneath the curtain and into the outer court. And, and that fire, again, which represents the presence of God, it lit on fire a sacrifice on the brazen altar. And God gave clear and concise instructions to Moses and the priesthood. He declared that the fire was to never go out. God said, never let this fire go out. He said, it shall continually be burning. Now, catch this. God initially lit the fire, but it was the hunger of the priest that kept the fire going. It was the obedience of the priesthood that kept the fire going. You see, God will light a fire in our hearts and in our lives, but it's our hunger for his presence and our obedience to his word that will keep it burning. God lit that fire in the wilderness tabernacle, and as long as it, that fire burned, it gave Israel confidence because that meant it told them that the Lord was with them and the Lord was for them. It is the presence of of the almighty God that falls on a person when the fire of God falls. And God desires that each of us would be filled with the fire of his presence. John the Baptist said this in Matthew chapter 3. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? With fire. Fire. And you know what happened about four years later? In Acts chapter 2, it says the Holy Spirit came flooding into the upper room. And Luke records that it was like burning fire that fell on the people of God. So not only were they baptized in the anointing and the giftings of God, they were baptized in the fiery presence of God. God's fire is his presence in your life. And just like it... And just like it brought confidence to the Israelites in the Old Testament because it meant God was with them and that God was for them, now his holy presence can be with us every single day. The fire of God being on our lives and in our hearts and in our lives. That presence that brings the favor that we need. That presence that brings the anointing that we need. That presence that brings the healing that we need. That, that is power on purpose. We need his presence in our lives now more than ever before, that presence that helps us love the unlovable, the presence that leads us and guides us in all truth, that presence that gives us holy boldness to stand up for what is right, that presence that breaks every chain of addiction. There are some of you here today, you're watching online and you've been weak long enough. You've been walking around with no direction long enough. You've been bound long enough and God's fiery presence is in this place right now, right where you are at. At, and he is desiring to bring you everything that you are lacking. If you're ready to step out and to step under the fire of God, give God your very best praise right now, right where you're at. Come on, we celebrate a lot of things in life. Let's celebrate the goodness of our God right now where you're at. It doesn't matter. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voice for your God is worthy and he wants to fill you with the fire of his presence in your life right now. It's power on purpose. I don't know about you, but I need that fire. And here's our big idea here today. Give me that fire. Give me that fire, yeah. Yeah, give me that fire, Lord. I need that fire every single day of my life. Now, over the remaining time that we have together, I want to look at a few reasons why we need the fire of God on our lives. 
So why do we need the fire of God? Why do we need to be filled with his presence? Why do we need that baptism? Yes, there's going to be gifts and, and everything's going to be flowing out, but why, what in, in real life, why do we need the fire of God? Let's look at the life of Jesus to answer that question here today because Jesus himself was filled with the fire of God. This is what it says in the book of Luke. Chapter 3, verses 21 to 22. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. Now, this is talking about water baptism. We learned about that last week. And Jesus was water baptized. And that means so should you. So I'm going to encourage you, if you have never been water baptized, if you never went public with your faith, uh, or maybe God is doing a new work in your life now, I want to encourage you to sign up today. They're going to, there's going to be a link in the comment section that you can just click on and sign up and register. We will baptize you the next week we are able to meet in person. Um, so after Jesus was water baptized, the Bible says he was praying. And heaven opened up and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. Now the Holy Spirit is not a dove. It says it was like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. I want to give you three quick results of the fire of God in your life. Three results of the spirit filled life from the life of Jesus. The first result of the fire of God in your life is this. Write this down. Direction. Direction. After Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, now you notice that, that, that Jesus himself was filled with the Holy Spirit. Before this moment, Jesus did not perform any miracles. He hadn't healed the sick. He hadn't raised the dead. He hadn't uh, calmed the raging storm. Now, I'm not stating that, that Jesus was unable to perform any miracles before this moment because, I mean, he was the son of God. But for whatever reason, Jesus did not begin his public ministry until the Holy Spirit fell on him. And if Jesus was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, how much more should we desire the fiery presence, the, the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit ourselves? Someone say, give me that fire. After Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Bible says this in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, so he's been full, he's been filled, the fire of God is on the inside of him. He left the Jordan and was led. Come on, somebody say led. Type that word right there in the comment section, led. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The first result of being filled by the fire of God is direction. Now, not just big picture direction. Yes, the Lord wants to give you a vision for your life. It is good to have that dream wall. He, he wants you to, to write out your goals and and, and live on purpose that way, but he will also give you direction season to season, chapter to chapter. He wants to guide your every step, to lead you and to guide you, to carry out the vision you now have. And the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and give you direction for your Zoe life. Now, you can't get this twisted. <laughs> you most likely will not hear God's audible voice. I'm not limiting God, but most likely you will not hear God speak to you directly, telling you where to go, what to eat, what job to take, who to date. Come on, somebody. No, most times the Holy Spirit, the fire of God on the inside of you will give you these, these things we call nudges. And just about every time that you see the Holy Spirit work with someone in the book of Acts, which is the history of the Holy Spirit's arrival and working uh, in, on the earth in and through the early church. So whenever he does that, you read this phrase. It says all throughout the book, he says, he, being the Holy Spirit, compelled them. The Holy Spirit moved on them. It's this nudging, it's this compelling, and, and, and if you will start pressing into God through prayer, if you will start pressing into God and getting into his word, what you will find is not just big picture vision, which you will have, but direction for your everyday life through the nudging of the Holy Spirit. And that is why it's so important for you and I to develop a, a personal walk with God. Yes, 
We need to be planted into the house of the Lord. And, and Sundays are good to get your spirit rejuvenated with other believers. It is good to listen to that podcast. But I'm telling you, the most powerful encounters that you can have with God is when you're going through the hard season, when you're going through the wilderness, and you get into God's presence, and he speaks to you intimately through his word, through the Holy Spirit. I mean, some of you, man, you're facing some massive decisions in your life, and those decisions are stressing you out. You're feeling all kinds of anxiety, and you can't sleep. Can I tell you? God, through his Holy Spirit, wants to lead you, and he wants to give you direction right now. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 119, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Notice it didn't say a spotlight to my path. Notice it didn't say God's word is like, a, is like the sun. It will brighten up your path. No, it says a lamp unto my feet. I don't know if you've ever lit a lamp, but it, it gives off a little bit of light. Yes, you'll, you'll be able to see enough to, to walk and to take that next step, but you won't be able to see that far down the road. But guess what? You will have enough light not to lose your way. You will have enough light to take that next step. And God has given us the light that we need to take our next step. Stop looking to this world. Stop looking to other things and begin to look to God's word and find your direction in his word. Because when you do, the fire of God, you got you to gotta hear this, because when you do, when you get in that word and you allow the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to you, what's going to happen is the fire of God will begin to lead you. He'll begin to guide you. For when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in, into all truth. He will lead our lives. So when it seems like it's harms, harmless, when it seems like it's not that big of a deal, all of a sudden the fire of God is going to come on the inside of you and it's it's going to stir something up. It's going to awake him. And it's going to say, no, 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 my child. Son, don't go there. Daughter, don't go there. And it's not because you are lost. It's because you're being led by the Spirit of God. It's not because you are weak. It's because you are strong in the Lord. It's not because you're immature. It's because you are mighty in God. It's not because you are a sinner. It is because you are redeemed and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you've been filled. You've been baptized by the fire of God, the fire of God. And so since the fire of his presence has filled you, he is leading you, he is guiding you. So therefore you can say, I know there is a way that seems right to a man, but I don't want a way that seems right. I want a way that is right. I want the path that Jesus has for me. I want the plans that Jesus has for me. I want this Zoe life that Jesus has for me. Come on, if that's you, if you want the fire of God to fill you right now, then take five seconds right now, right where where you're at and begin to lift up a shout of praise and ask God to fill you with that fire. Amen. Come on, give me that fire. Give me that fire. That's power on purpose. God wants to fill you with his fire so he can lead you and guide you every single day. The second result of the fire of God is power. Come on, somebody. Somebody say power. This is what it says. After Jesus was led into the wilderness, he was fasting, he was praying. The enemy came and was tempting him, and he defeated the enemy through the word. Again, through the word. He defeated the enemy, and then it says this in Luke 4, 14. Jesus then returned to Galilee in what? In power, in the power of the Spirit. Jesus was filled with power from his Father in heaven, power that came from the fire of God. And before Jesus ascended to heaven, he commanded his followers to wait in Jerusalem for what? The same power. He says in, in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. So guess what? Trouble may be coming your way. Trials may be coming your way. For Jesus said, in this life you will have trouble. But guess what? He also said, relax. 
Take heart, for I have overcome the world. And now that same power that raised Jesus from the grave, that same power that gave Jesus authority in that wilderness to defeat the enemy, you have the same power inside of you, and you have the power to overcome every obstacle you face. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The result of the fire of God in your life is that he will give you everyday direction. He will lead you. He will guide you in all truth and you will receive power from almighty God. Why? Because there are some things in this life that you cannot handle by yourself. There are some junk that you cannot deal with. There's some mountains you cannot move. There's some problems you cannot solve. And so you and I, we need the miracle working power in and through our lives. And God sent me here today to let somebody know you have the power of the almighty God on the inside of you. So when they lay you off at work and when the doctor gives you a bad report and when your loved one passes away and when you want what you wanted to happen doesn't happen you don't need to fall apart you don't need to unleash your emotions on social media you don't need to give up on God no 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 the fire of God is going to rise up on the inside of you and you can stand under the power of the Holy Spirit and declare I will not be overcome I will overcome and experience all that God has for my life Come on, give me that fire. I need that fire. I don't know about you. I need God's direction in my life. There's some things in my life that I can't handle on my own. I need that fire. I need that power of God in my life. I want to experience everything that God has for me and nothing left. This Zoe life, the life that God has destined us to have. When the fire of God fills you, he gives you direction. He fills your life with power. And the last result that we're going to look at today, there's a lot of different results, but the last result we're going to look at today, write this down, purpose. Come on, somebody say purpose. I'm telling you, this is why the enemy wants you freaked out about this Holy Spirit that we've been talking about. He wants you to believe that all of this stuff is not for today. But Hebrews tells us that God never changes. He's the, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The enemy doesn't want you to experience this Zoe life. If, and, and if he cannot keep you from God, then he doesn't want you to be led by the Lord. He doesn't want you to realize the power that has been given to you. And he certainly doesn't want you walking around in your purpose. And this is why when Jesus was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to fast and pray. The enemy came to tempt him just like he tempts you and just like he tempts me. But Jesus defeated the enemy in the wilderness through, his, through the Word of God and returns in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then check out what Jesus begins to do. The Bible tells us that he began his purpose. It says this in verse 15. He said, it says, he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. The fire of God in our lives, it leads us. The fire of God in our lives, it empowers us. And the fire of God brings out our purpose. Listen, somebody needs to hear this today. You've been called by God to do great things for his kingdom. Not your kingdom, but his kingdom. You have an assignment from God. And here's what you need to know. When God assigns, he anoints. What does that mean? That means that you've been marked by the power and the presence of the almighty God. So when God assigns, he anoints. You can say it this way. Here's a key thought for us today. <clears throat> you have been anointed for your assignment and you have been empowered for your purpose. So wherever you are, whatever your current assignment is, you could be a construction worker. You could be a stay-at-home mom. You could be a college student. You could be a salesman. You could be a, a, a health care worker or an over-the-road trucker. Whatever your current assignment is, you have been anointed for that assignment. 
If your current assignment is to parent a teenager, you need to know that even when it gets tough and you're trying to do your best and their their attitude isn't lining up with how you raise them and you feel like a failure, you feel like giving up, you need to understand that you have been anointed for that assignment. Maybe you're watching and you're a teacher and you've been working harder this year than you ever have in your entire career. The kids, they're not listening. The parents, they're, they're so demanding without even leading in their own home. And you're like, man, I'm done with this. Tomorrow morning, when that alarm clock goes off, you need to wake up understanding that you have been anointed for this assignment. You have been empowered for this purpose. You have been marked by the power and the presence of God. Because here's the mistake I think a lot of us make. We try to separate the sacred and the secular. The spiritual from the worldly we say okay I'm going to be spiritual for like 75 minutes on Sunday I'm going to come in I'm going to connect with God I'm going to get everything that I need from him and then I'm going to go and then, and then that's when the real life stuff happens and that's not the way God wants to interact with you God desires to be a part of every area of your life listen to me he doesn't just care about Sunday morning he cares about Monday He cares about Tuesday morning, Friday morning, and he also cares about Friday night, so you better watch out. Be careful. God cares about every area of your life. He wants to help you become a better mother. He wants to help you become a better father, a better businessman. He wants to help you become a better boss, a better employee. He cares about every area of your life. And if he's assigned you to that thing, you better believe that he's placed his hand on your life and you've been empowered to carry out that purpose. You and I need the fire of God in our lives to walk in the anointing that goes with our assignment. Come on, somebody say, give me that fire. Come on, type it in the comment section. Give me that fire. Come on, type it with some faith. Declaring God, give me that fire. Listen, I know your purpose is hard. I know your assignment isn't easy. But the Bible tells us that the anointing of God will break every yoke of bondage. I'm going to close with this scripture. I love it. I love what the psalmist says. With your help, I can shrink back in fear. Is that what it says? With your help, I can... Live an unfulfilled life. With your help, I can run from opposition. Is that what it says? No. It says, with your help, I can advance against a troop by myself. Not really. With God. Because he says, with my God, I can scale a wall. I love that. When enemies rise up against me and my purpose seems too difficult, If I'm anointed for this assignment, if I'm empowered by the fire of God, I don't need to run in defeat. No, I can square up my shoulders and I can run towards my adversary. He says if an obstacle stands before me, I can jump over it, not in my own strength, but under the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit in my life. Listen, I should run from opposition if I'm alone. I should be disappointed if I'm standing at that wall and I'm alone but when I'm anointed for my assignment no opposition can keep me from doing what I've been called to do when I'm empowered by the fire of God for my purpose no wall no obstacle can keep me from doing what I've been called to do I've I, you have been anointed for your assignment you've been empowered for your purpose no opposition on earth no devil in hell no opposition no obstacle in your way can keep you from doing what God has called 
called you and marked you to do. So you need to wake up every day declaring, I am anointed for my assignment. I've been empowered for my purpose. I will raise my kids in the fear of the Lord. I will build a business that will honor God. I will lead my life in a way that will point others to Christ. I will do what God has called me to do for when I'm empowered by the fire of God. I'm led by the Spirit. I'm empowered to rout the enemy and I'm anointed for every assignment that God has given me. Come on, if you want the fire of God to fill your life today, go ahead wherever you're at. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voice. Come on and worship our God. Come on, give us that fire, Lord. Fill us fresh and new right now, God. Burn away everything that is not of you and burn in everything, every desire that you have. Come on, who is with me here today? Come on, lift up a shout of praise and declare, God, fill me with your fire and lead me and guide me, empower me so I can live out my purpose. Man, I know you're not here with me today in the room, but I can feel his presence. I can feel his anointing in this place. God is doing something in our lives. God is doing something in our church. That's power on purpose. Now remember, God will light the fire. And just like he lit the fire in the wilderness tabernacle, but just like those priests and those prophets needed to keep that fire burning, if we're going to walk in the Zoe life that God has for us, we need to keep that fire burning. Some of you, man, you've allowed the busyness of your schedule to snuff out that flame. You've allowed the apathy of your heart, complacency to snuff out that flame. Let's keep that fire burning. Set the alarm tomorrow 20 minutes earlier than you normally get up so you can get into his word and get into his presence. Take the time you have on the road to work and, and throw on some worship and, and worship your God and allow God's presence to fill you fresh and new. Get into a small group. Get around some other flames to build off of their fire. If you've gone through growth track, start serving again. There's nothing better than serving the Lord and his kingdom with other believers that, to, to, to keep that flame burning. Man, others of you, man, you feel that nudge this morning that we're, we're talking about. You know you're not right with the Lord. And the Lord is calling you to himself today. He wants to light this fire within you so your Zoe life can begin today. And lastly, I believe that there are people in here today or, or watching online, you're, you're, you're walking with the Lord, but you're not being led by the Spirit. You're redeemed by the grace of God, but you have not been walking under the authority that has been given to you, and you've been lacking in your purpose. God is going to fill you fresh and new right now today. I want to give you an opportunity to respond if that's where you find yourself in any one of those categories. I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna lead us through a prayer. And if you're away from God, I just wanna let you know that he loves you so very much. He loves you so much that he sent his very own son on this earth to die on a cross just for you. And the Bible says that all we have to do is confess out of our mouth that he is Lord, confess our sins to him. And the Bible says that he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of all of our sins. And if you're here today and you need a fresh touch from God, a fresh filling of that fire, all we have to do is ask Him, ask Him to fill us fresh and new. So Father, we thank you that God, that you are here with us, that you are here for us. And God, I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful for your fiery presence that fills our lives. Lord, I pray for that person here who is watching, who is redeemed. They're, they're bought by your love and your grace. Fill them fresh and new. Begin to lead every step of their lives. Lord, I pray for a fresh fire to burn inside of their hearts for your presence and for your word. And for those who are away from you, Wrap your loving arms around them. And if that's you, I want to lead you through a prayer right now. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you a sinner 
in need of a Savior. I believe that your son Jesus came to this earth, lived a sinless life, went to the cross, went to the grave, and then rose again. And right now, through your Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come into my life, forgive me my sins, wash me, and make me new. Right now, by faith, I declare that I'm a child of God, that I'm forgiven, and that I'm free. And Father, I stretch out my hands to you. Fill me with your presence. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, Lord, I pray that your fiery presence will come into my life. And I pray that, God, that you would begin to lead me, that you begin to guide me, that you would fill me with your power, that I can conquer the flesh, that I can conquer the enemy that is, that is attacking me. And Father, I ask that, God, you would awaken your purpose within me. In Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Hey, thanks for tuning in to our online experience. It's our prayer that you experience the freedom and life that only God has to offer. If you have a prayer request or a question, go ahead and drop us a line. Email us at hope at freedom.life. And if this message blessed you, share it on social media, send it to a friend, be a hope dealer. And again, thanks for tuning in. And we believe in your life, the best is still yet to come.